Hi guys, Jurassic Junk here, or also known as that guy on the internet who really hates EA. Welcome to the Friday Night Rant. So it's freezing in here, I've had to have put my chimney sweep hat on. Uh, I've just got in from work, so chances are this is probably going to be just before the end of Friday, teetering into Saturday, depends how long I can quickly edit it. So let's not mess about, crack on. And then um, I got a beer um, and I was about to drink it and Joe's like, oh, let's go to shops. And she noticed something very cool and I was like, we've got to try that. And um, what it is, is ginger wine, Krabby's ginger wine. Now, as most people know, I am a fan of Krabby's and uh, is now in wine form, so I can't say no. I'm not gonna be a dirty man and drink from the bottle. Very rare occasions, we do have a glass on this show. I get the smell, smell of nuts, it's oaky taste, mm. Bottoms up. Win, instant win. That is nice, it's like, um, it's like, Grab his ginger beer, but not like beer, in wine form. But it's got a very thick taste to it. Wine, to me, is quite a light drink. And this is quite thick and heavy, so it is very nice. It tastes like a spirit, actually. But no, that's very good. That's going to start us off on a good thing. Probably polish that and then go to work tomorrow hanging. So, the first thing um, we want to talk about is the new dashboard update. Um, if anyone's rocking an Xbox 360, you'll know you would have got your dashboard update over the last few days. And I installed it and I like it. A lot of people are saying straight away, oh, I don't like it. But you know how I feel with the new YouTube. I just think things should change every so often just to keep them fresh. And I just like the way it all works. It's very, very clean. Um, and the best thing of all, they've actually introduced a new feature which is called apps. I think it's called apps or something along the line of, but it's like widgets. And what we're going to do is release apps and then you can install them. So obviously, originally you had some small things like Sky, but there wasn't really an app. It was just one thing they gave us. But it looks like now they're going to be rolling, over, rolling out loads of features. And the best thing of all, YouTube's coming at last. And I know we still haven't got an internet browser, but... Step in the right direction, we are getting there. But one little thing that they did um, upset me a little bit, and they've snuck a tiny little advert in there. And now, this advert isn't in your face, um, you don't accidentally click it or anything. I've got no problem with the advert being there. The only issue I've got is I pay like £30 a year for my Xbox Gold account. Now, if they gave it to everybody who wasn't on Gold, I'd be like, okay, that's fine. And I think as a perk of being a Gold member, you shouldn't be exposed to any advertising whatsoever. So I just think it's a bit naughty of them taking money from me and then at the same time earning money off advertisers. So obviously they're there to make money, but at the same time I'm just like, that. that's a bit naughty and I, I, I don't like it there. But already it's the internet and it don't take people a few seconds to work out how to remove it. And if you want to remove it, I was going to say I'll put the link below, but because time constraints I'll probably forget and uh, just Google it. But the way to do it is actually slightly uh, over the top. To me, I'm just gonna leave it there. It's not pestering there. It just annoys me that Microsoft think they should be showing us adverts even though we are paying customers. So, a bit of Nintendo news then. I don't always talk about Nintendo. Um, I just realized I look really yellow. I ain't got my glasses on, so I can't quite tell. It looks like my kidneys are failing. So, in fact, I feel quite bad. That was Nathan's joke last week about me. So yeah, there you go. Nathan, that was his joke, laugh at it. So yeah, there was a few rumours going around this week that Miyamoto had actually retired and straight away people were going, oh my god, he's retired and then Nintendo quickly responded by saying, no, he hasn't retired, he's just stepped back. And at first I was reading about it going, how is this going to affect Nintendo? And I'm kind of happy he stepped back because, first of all, I don't want him to leave the company as much as I badmouth Nintendo. The only thing I have bad about Nintendo is just that I feel slightly cheated that there wasn't enough games to justify buying an expensive unit. Um, but that aside, Nintendo obviously a great company. And for him stepping backwards or step down, however you want to put it, I think it's good. Because if he steps down, that means there's obviously a place free and then that will get fresh blood in there. Um, so whoever's going to be taking his spot, fingers crossed that he'll be able to not shake up the company, but it's always good to get fresh new ideas in there because I feel like Nintendo at the moment have 
reinvented a lot of the same games over and over again and not brought any new characters, um, which is a shame. So hopefully if a new person comes in, that will actually start to happen. And the second thing is, he said he's actually stepped backwards, so he can spend more time working with younger developers. So obviously Nintendo must have a set of developers or some graduates that they've grabbed and obviously they're teaching to program. And um, the thing is, it's good that he is obviously the creator of like Mario and Zelda and he knows what he's doing. So to actually be able to put the students under his wing and then teach him the ways. And the thing is, when he does pass on or, or do, does retire or anything like that, then that knowledge has already been passed down to the next generation and then they can continue. So I think it's really good that Nintendo are passing that knowledge down and not just once he's gone, so has that kind of love for Mario and Zelda. So I think it's good that he's actually stepping backwards a bit, get a bit of fresh blood in, and at the same time teach, teach the new kids. I feel sorry if I keep squinting, I don't know if I am, but that light is so bright. <laughs> I don't know what's happened if Joe's changed the bulb or what, but it's killing me. So this week, in fact, we'll pause, have a bit of thick wine. This week, a new game's in. Start to show his face, and it's called The Last of Us. Now, I'm very intrigued by this because the way they've advertised it, and that is by not showing anything at all. And I love it when games do that because it just makes you go, ooh, this is exciting. Like some games just give you too much. In fact, I'll tell you what, Mass Effect 3, I couldn't even tell you if it gave it too much, but I wouldn't even watch one of them trailers because when I did, I caught a slight shot of a Reaper or something like that. I was like, it's too much. I didn't even know, I didn't even want to care about what I was fighting about. I wanted to know nothing. So some people give too much away in the trailers. Whereas the guys from The Last of Us have um, not shown anything at all, not even in-game footage. Um, what they've done is they've just shown what appears to be like the start of Dawn of the Dead 2, where it's got like media footage, so real video footage of people fighting and writing and stuff like that. So it just kind of a clip it of the world going crazy and then just kind of leaves it while a guy's narrating over the top simply saying that he misses the days of baseball and the smell of hot dog grease. And it just made you go, this is kind of cool. And then another video was of an ant walking up a leaf and then what sounded like, I think, was a chainsaw, but I don't know if it was a chainsaw or not, then it stopped. So it just made you want more. And I love it when people do that with movies or games or anything. I just love to be teased all the way before they actually give me the product. So I think straight away the marketing on this is brilliant. Um, they did release two screenshots. One of them appears to be of just like ivy and trees and bushes. And if that is an in-game shot, then we're on for a really, really graphically stunning game. Now this is a PlayStation 3 exclusive, so they might be trying to push it and really try and get the high def graphics working. But a few people have been saying it could be in-game graphics, but it's been slightly doctored. Now I can believe that actually because the image is absolutely stunning. But um, they've also released another one, which is of a newspaper clipping, and it simply says on there that million, fear of millions of people dying because of a virus outbreak and not much more information. So they kind of just give you a taste of saying it's a virus, so we don't know if this virus is mutating people, is it turning them into zombies? Now if it does turn them into zombies, I'm going to be happy anyway because I'm a big zombie buff. But that story has been told too many times now. So hopefully they're going to go with something fresh like I Am Legend and just did some weird like mutated humans kind of thing. But at the end of the day, if they give me zombies, I'm not going to moan. So yes, that's pretty cool that they didn't give you anything away. So I'll probably put the link below, but if not, you've heard it, so you can Google it yourself. But um, speaking of not giving much away, the BBC has actually played a blinder this week, and they've been working on a Doctor Who game. So not many people knew that it was coming out, it was all kept very quiet, tight lips, and then like a prat, the BBC accidentally released a trailer for it. Now there's not much information in the trailer, but they shouldn't have even been releasing it yet, so now all the Doctor Who fans are aware that there is a game coming to, I think it was the PlayStation and PC, I can't remember seeing the Xbox logo on there, but nonetheless, they accidentally leaked out their own trailer, so BBC, you are awesome. This is, this is going to get me twisted. So while we're talking about TV things being turned into games, um, South Park is getting a new game. Now South Park games have been around in the past, um, I've never really played them, I don't think they've been the best games in the world, fair enough I haven't played them but I've never heard anybody go, oh my god that South Park game is the best game in the world. So going on that, they've probably been a bit poor. 
But um, they're going to release a new one. And the thing which has interested me is I watched like a 15 minute development video about it. And what they've done is Matt Stone and Trey Parker went direct to a company, which I forgot. So let me just have a look. Obsidian. Yeah, I knew it was Obsidian. So they've gone straight to Obsidian, which is weird because when most people go to create a game, they'll actually give the license to somebody then they find a developer. And it's there's so many middlemen. And what Matt, I can say Matt Parker, Matt Stone and Trey Parker have actually done it. It's gone straight to the developers and says, right, we want a South Park game. But they've actually sat down with them and just by listening to the video, there was actually talking about the games that they love and how they like Oblivion and RPGs and just sat and geeked out about games. And then the developers fed off that and says, right, we're going to create, obviously, a, a tech demo of such. You come back and see if you like it. So what they're actually going to do is spend a lot of time creating a game that actually looks purely like South Park. No 3D crap, nothing. It actually looks like an episode of South Park. But it's going to be an RPG, which... To me, it sounds weird because it is South Park. But after listening to the video, it just sounds like they are so passionate about doing it because they want to give you a RPG. But obviously, some South Park fans are going to jump onto this game and they're probably not going to be bothered about RPGs. So they said they're going to tear it in so many levels so you can get through with the basics if you want. But if you are a full-on RPG fan, you can really go deep and actually unlock different parts of the characters. Now... This South Park game actually looks like it's going to be a good South Park game. So again, Google it. I will try and put the link down below. Chances are I won't. But um, yeah, it looks absolutely amazing. So there's not much information about it actually seeing the videos as such. But the actual screenshots look really, really good. It does look like South Park. I've seen some of the concept art. And you can go around the entire park and there's a big bit with the UFO. And to me... I like South Park, I don't watch enough of it because Joe's not a fan and normally if your girlfriend doesn't like something it kind of affects your ability to watch something. So I've not watched enough South Park so to me it might be my um, way to actually top up on my kiddies fart jokes. So one other thing I just wanted to mention, very tiny, teeny teeny, is Twisted Metal is on its way out. Now a lot of people are very interested in this because obviously Twisted Metal came out originally and it was great and it just kind of died and people wanted it to come back. And it is. And the best thing is the developers have actually turned around and I've got to give them respect for saying this because they've probably got the ball shoot off for saying it. But what they've turned around and says, right, the game's obviously on its way, it's going to have online elements, blah, blah, blah. But we're going to try and get past the online pass side of things. We want the game to go without an online pass. Now, they've got no choice in the matter. The thing is, that's going to be down to Sony who says yes or no. But respect for them to actually say that because by saying that it starts like the ball rolling and it starts fans going, yes, we don't want an online pass. Then if Sony introduce it, it's obviously going to piss off a lot of people and Sony will get the flack. So it's very clever of them to say it because then it's going to fire heat their way. And it might be better for Sony to actually go, yeah, we'll let this one pass. Because I remember originally when they said with the online pass, it was down to the developers if they wanted it or not. And then it seems like the tables have turned and now just Sony push it out to most things. So it, we'll, we shall see how it actually pans out. But the chances are you may get a Twisted Metal without an online pass, which is awesome. So, online passes, evil companies, we can only mean one thing. It's EA time. So, I wanted to get a really clever EA flashy intro because it's just happening every single week. And I thought, right, I'll make something really clever, but just due to time constraints, I can't. But EA, I've done it again. I didn't even look for EA news this week. It just fell on my lap. I was just like, EA, no matter what you do, once a week, you will piss off the internet and give me something to talk about. So, they gave me something good this week. It's gold. Let's have a little drink before we crack in with it. I hope you're liking the Christmas thing. I said it last week, but I'll say it again. Very Christmassy. I can't believe Christmas is like two weeks away. It's ridiculous. Or maybe three, whatever. I'm not doing the math. So, the story goes, a chap was buying Hot Pursuit, which is obviously over a year old. Uh, he brought it brand new, so therefore EA get the full money load. They don't lose out on second-hand market. They get the cash for that one. And um, he opened it up, put it in, went to play online, and it says you need to have an online pass. So he's like, cool, this is a brand new product, so there's probably going to be an online pass in there, which there was. And he took the code, put it in, and it's expired. Now, what EA are you doing are actually making 
the passes expire after a year. So not only do you have to buy a brand new product to be able to get online, if you buy a brand new product, which is a year old, you still got to pay for a pass. So you could buy a brand new game and then you've still got to give EA five pound to just get online, even though you've bought a brand new sealed copper. So, so EA just simply turned around and says, the online passes shouldn't expire, but they do. And then left it at that. And what they've done is obviously people have started doing a bit of digging and it sounds like if anyone's got Dragon Age 2, um, that was obviously released in March, so as of the end of March 2012, all those codes will expire as well. So if you've actually got Dragon Age on your shelf and you've not played it yet, and there's a pass in there, scratch it off and stick it in now because it is going to expire. I don't know, uh, EA can get away with it. In fact, I do, they've just got fingers in so many gorgeous pies. That's the problem. I want to give up EA, I really do. But they've got Mass Effect, Skate, Battlefield, all the good games. And I just can't give them up. Oh, I'm going to leave us with the question of the week. And it simply is, everybody knows I am very passionate about my hate for EA. So, have anybody else got any passionate hate for another company? Now, if it wasn't for EA, I'd have to say mine goes to Activision. Just because of the amount of content they bang out, the peripherals which are not needed. It just seems like they just try to make so much money. But... I'm not going to get started because I could be here for another 30 minutes in my Activision. And I say, hey, because that's how I am. I'm not going to lie. I say, hey, instead of hate. So, who do you hate and why? I'm mean, not talking about YouTubers here before all the trolling starts. What game company or developer or publisher do you actually hate? So that's it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'm going to punish this. Wake up with a hanging headache and uh, sit there for 12 hours working away. As you can tell, I'm loving my job. No, it's not that bad, but 12 hours kills anybody. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. Sorry I look like I'm dying, and there's a Christmas tree in the background. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.